Hello, everyone. Uh, today, we're going to start with a spell. So once this phone comes to the end of its life, we usually discuss it and then it becomes a waste. For a phone, it usually contains more than 30 chemical elements, including metals, for example, lithium, copper, zinc, and also rare earth elements, something like neodymium, yttrium. And also it has other critical materials as well. So not only this phone, but many product after you use, you may put it in the, in the waste. They also contain a lot of critical, valuable material. What if I told you that those waste is a very important resource that we can mine from and they can help us try not to mining those from natural oil. So my talk is going to talk about mining waste as a resource using renewable energy. So in 2024 on our planet, we have about 8.2 million people and generating about 42 million tons CO2 emission and also about 2 million tons waste. If all those waste we put on the tracks, they can go around the world about 24 times. And what we are dealing with those waste, the majority of them goes to the landfill. So here, 10 world's largest landfill and dump sites. And you can see the largest one is in Las Vegas, followed by Mexico City and Shanghai. So you can tell the general trend now, more people, more trash, more CO2 emission. Unfortunately, like population increase and those trash increase will be almost a certain thing in the near future. Based on the prediction, by 2050, there'll be 9.7 million human beings on the planet generating 43 million tons of CO2 and about 4 million tons of waste. So the waste increase about, about two times compared to what we have now. That means we will need more landfill in the future. At that time, the waste management cost will up to $640 million billion per year. However, those things will increase, but we mentioned we will have a lot of economic burden, but it's not only about that. Beyond the economic cost, we also need to pay a lot of live environment costs as well. You can see from those photos, uh, people and animals living around the landfill site, they are so struggling with those lives and the waste around them. When we focus on the environment impact of the waste, its influence of this triple crisis on the planet is so clear, it including climate change, biodiversity loss, and waste dispose in the landfill. Those like metals and elements directly go into our daily use water, air, and land. They have a huge damage. Mostly in most cases, they are irreversible to the local area and also harming the, the, the entire ecosystem. And eventually, those things will enter human food chain. Every year, between 400K and 1 million people are dead due to those reasons, and those are directly related to mismanagement of those waste. Those diseases including cancers, heart disease, and an immune system disease. So as we all clearly know, we cannot live without either energy or material. And we really need to reshape how we generate, obtain them, and consume. So during those processes, decarbonization is critical. Even after that, we still need to think what comes after the energy material consumption. Actually, nature has done very great demonstration for us. In the ecosystem, after the energy and the material are, are obtained and used by the customers, and there's always something in the system can help us either decompose them or convert them into another type of either energy or material and then get back to the system. However, for human activities, we make the whole process linear. We obtain the energy and material from nature, and then we make them into product delivered to users. In most cases, those will end up either in waste or emission leakage. If there's a way we can reuse, remanufacture, and recycle them by new technology or new process, it would be great, and we can eventually close the loop of this energy material producing and consumption. So this we will call a circular economy. Now we have two tasks, decarbonization and circular economy. And as I am an engineer and as uh, most engineering do, I like to get things done very efficiently. So I will ask, is there a way to achieve both sides at the same time? 
My approach is use electrochemical devices and processes. On one side, it can help us to store, convert those energy into any form or location that we need. On the other side, it can help us to create a new type of solution to help the sustainable mining and material recovery. So as we all noticed, in the past two decades, the cost of electricity keeps dropping down. It is a good news for our planet, for our users, but it's not always so good for the renewable energy facility who generate them. So how can we help this situation? In the past century, there's, uh, people already have a good try to use waste to generate renewable energy. This facility called Waste to Energy Facility, also called WTE, so there will be 300 million tons of the waste generated in U.S. per year, and 10% of them delivered to this facility. During the burning, we generate the heat. Those heat can be used and turned into electricity, so to the national grid. And we also have two byproducts. One is the non-toxic emission directly go to the atmosphere, so they very heavily controlled by regulation. And the other byproduct is ash. Those ash still need to Landfill. So every year we have 6.6 .6 million tons of the ash. So we will still have the same problem. It is a good sustainable try, but this solution doesn't help to solve the problem completely. So our team at MIT, we're looking to those ash. We analyze the chemical composition, their concentration, and we can't get to this map from literary studies and also based on the samples we obtained from our collaborator. So you can tell above those curves are all the values of the uh, cumulative value of those elements in the ash. They all buy higher than this dash line. So this dash line is a net revenue from the WT facility by like how they sell the electricity and gain this revenue. So you can see those buried landfill material has high value than electricity sell. And we noticed that those elements in the red box, they have the highest uh, value. And this it can be, uh, could be our target elements in our uh, ne next generation of technology. And the question is, how can we extract those material not existing, like not high, ha do not have a higher cost of traditional mining industries? So we come up with this idea, we uh, develop the whole system, uh, we use a renewable energy to close the loop of the world faster growing uh, waste stream. We directly obtain electricity, we will use water and table salt. Those are what you usually use in kitchen for cooking, right? So we use electricity to split salt water into chemical reagents, and then we can directly process ash on site and with leaching dissolution and uh, different type of uh, chemical and electrochemical process. And our output will be those mined products that are sellable material to help the facility to gain more revenue. We're definitely looking to the more detailed process to design a better, more energy efficient process to gain higher product yield. So you can see here, like after uh, all those processes, we can successfully recover metal, including copper, lead, zinc, and also hydroxide salt, including magnesium, calcium, or with also byproducts like iron, rare earth concentration, precious metal groups. So after everything here, then we can combine the excessive chemical generated in the beginning and also the leftover brine after this process together get back into this system so they can be used for the next generation of chemicals. We truly can realize the zero waste closed loop process for mining ash by doing this technology. We also look into whether this technology can help make the renewable energy facility benefit from adopting that. So this is a simple example. Uh, we get numbers from our collaborators. In traditional way, they will obtain the solid waste, burning them, generate electricity, sell them at five cents per kilowatt hour to the national grid. And we, they need to pay $50 per ton to landfill the waste. And each year, they will have net revenue about $4.8 million per year. After assume they were adopting our technology, they can increase their net revenue by roughly two times by recovering those elements using their electricity, sell the product, and avoid paying the landfill fees. 
More importantly for us, it's not this two times net revenue increase. The more important is environmental benefit. We definitely can reduce the need of the ash landfill, right? Because we have a closed loop, we do not have any waste after that. And we minimize the heavy water pollution because we already recover them. And we also avoid additional waste generated, including the brine and the, the liquid waste after that. And compared to traditional mining, to obtain same amount, same type of elements, we definitely do not have or minimize the CO2 emission during the whole process. This technology plays a very important role and will definitely contribute significantly in the future for both decarbonization and circular economy. So moving forward uh, to a circular economy and taking a zero waste approach with renewable energy is the only route we will say to a safe, affordable, and sustainable future. So I will get back to my example with the phone. So next time, when you need to dispose your device, uh, smaller as a phone, biggest could be your car, I want you to think again how and where you want to dispose them. Find a place where you want to give those to the people who are doing those type of technology or recover material or at least reuse them in a sustainable, greener way. So together, we will make a better, greener planet for ourselves and for our children. Thank you very much. Thank you.